Alright, good morning, Let Twos. Do the online class for you guys today since every single Let Two other than the first period is online. <clears throat> so today we're focused on Unit 2, Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Elements of Leadership. That we have here, I'll do as a presentation, make it work as, as best possible anyway. Um, try and get to where the, um, the what's it called, the, the curriculum manager version 3, uh, that'll actually involve clicking in um, externally. So we'll see how this works here. Um, that we'll mess with later for when we do the quiz on Friday. Hopefully I'll have that figured out by then and have you guys uh, able to log in and do that. Okay. Elements of leadership. Think about what elements of leadership you possess. Um, you've already been in JRTC for one year. Um, think about some of the things that you have participated in, things that you've been active in, and um, let's see what you can do. Okay. Let's write a few notes on that. Uh, it's hard to do without being interactive here, but what do you already know about leadership? Uh, you see some key words there, uh, communication, trust, direction, uh, mission, team building, strategy, so that all those things come into play as you develop your leadership skills and, and what it takes to be a leader. All things we can, we all have the need to work on. Okay, quick question for you. Leadership is what? Yeah. Giving orders to others. Now nah, that gets old real quick. Uh, guiding and influencing others. Uh, that actually sounds pretty good. Attaining a position of power. Well, if you're a megalomaniac. You get, okay. So let's go with B. Guiding and influencing others. That seems like the best thing. That's what a real leader is. Um, if it, any of you have ever heard the term servant leadership. Uh, focuses on the privilege of, of leading. Which puts a burden of responsibility on you. To, to guide and influence others. Okay. Talk about the key questions from the student lesson plan. You know, what will we accomplish? What will we learn? And successfully meeting the lesson's purpose, that would be through demonstration. Um, some of you, well, actually none of you got the opportunity to go to JCLC this past year. So that might be an opportunity that for this next year, hopefully we'll be past the coronavirus uh, COVID thing so that you guys can actually do this. Um, implement some leadership skills uh, and get folks back into the classroom. You know, you'll take turns in le leadership positions to do the practical application of, of this. Okay. Learning objectives. What are some of the leadership opportunities we have in JRTC? Um, it might be physical fitness. Uh, we try to get some variety. We have some basic expectations for PT, but we want you to actually lead PT on Monday. Uh, again, rotate you through in leadership positions, maybe just a drill, learn how to march a squad. Uh, again, take turns doing that. It's more than just doing knockout and things like that. We'll talk about the Army leadership model and got some key words that we'll define over the next two days of lessons. And then uh, don't forget, you'll probably, key words you usually see when we have the quiz on Friday. Okay. Quick leadership survey. Leaders are born, not made. Would you agree or disagree? Um, there may be some natural talents that come around or that people growing up that they, they've been exposed to, but I, I'd have to say that really I disagree that, that leadership skills can be learned and you have to learn how to implement them. Nobody's just born with leadership skills. <clears throat> Leadership opportunities are available only to fourth-year cadets. Would you agree or disagree? Um, like we just talked about, there's all sorts of leadership opportunities even just in the daily classroom. So that's definite disagree. Uh, to be a team captain. Um, obviously, if you've been on the team four years, you're more likely to be chosen for that position, but it's definitely not a guarantee. Um, what are your skill sets? What do you bring to the table? Okay, motivation is up to the leader. I'm sorry, up to the individual, leaders have no role. Uh, definite disagree. Uh, there is a component, you know. We talk about in this classroom, you're expected to show up with a positive attitude and give each task your best effort. So there's a certain level of motivation there, but leaders can help drive that, help 
create that opportunity, help create that motivation. So again, that would be a, a disagree. There's only one effective way to lead. Um, again, you guys have been in the program for a year. You, are, you should already know the answer to this. Uh, there's different leadership styles. Uh, when we do our winning colors, uh, how you motivate people and, and what their leadership style might be can vary greatly uh, because of that. If you're uh, the red, the hands-on um, adventurer type person, your style is going to be very different from a green planner um, and builder for the brown. So that's a, that's a disagree. And the blue, you know, the, or later, you know, we talk winning colors, um, how they are able to get people to do things is very different uh, by appealing to the sensibilities of the person and focus on the team as opposed to the, the red who's going to, you know, let's, let's focus on the task, let's get things done. Okay. Effective leaders focus on the task at hand, not the people involved. We just talked a little bit about that. You kind of need to be able to do both. Okay. Um, so even if you are mostly red, you still need to have a little bit of that blue in there, that relator, to make that effective. So again, the term is effective leaders. So don't just always use the example of what you've seen, because sometimes the examples you've seen may not be the best examples of leadership. Okay. Leadership impacts team effectiveness. Agree or disagree? <clears throat> I think we can we can agree on that one. Uh, leadership has a huge effect uh, or a huge impact on that. Uh, is it solely up to the leader? No, but that that is good leadership does. You can see the positive role there. Let me double check how we're doing on time. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Think about what leadership means. Um, again, a lot of those words are going to come into play when you think about about leadership. <clears throat> okay, leadership opportunities. Uh, we already hit a few of those. Uh, we're going to be doing orienteering. So, um, you know, we, we talk about doing a map reading class, and uh, we're hoping to do a competition here in October. And therefore, as you guys are let twos, maybe you're going to be paired up with a, a let one, someone brand new to the program has never done before. Some of you did do orienteering last year. We actually, I think we had, what, 28 people went out to the Yellow Creek State Park when we did the orienteering competition out there. So, again, opportunity for you to mentor, lead, uh, help others. Uh, our service learning project, when we get back out here, we've already done a lot on that, but we still need to get that finished up because that got put on hold due to COVID back in the spring. Uh, the Veterans of Valley High Memorial out in front of the, the school, we need to get that finished up. So some of you may have specific roles, um, portions of that project that you take a leadership role in. And, and when you're not in a leadership position, you need to be a good follower, a good, um, good team player. Okay. Defining leadership. The ability to influence, lead, or guide others in order to accomplish a mission. Uh, that's, that's your key right there. Um, you know, think about some leaders that you've known in the past, what, what was it that they were trying to do? That really does sum it up right there. Uh, influence, lead, or guide others to accomplish a mission. What do pro leaders provide? Purpose, direction, motivation. You know, again, all three of those are essential uh, to be effective. History of leadership models. You know, go back to... Um, you know, the 1800s, the whole, there's a bit of the aristocracy, you know, the, 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 you had to be a royal to be a leader. Uh, there's some of that theory going on. Um, they believe that people were born leaders. Got into behaviors then after that uh, from World War II up into the 70s. And then talk about contingency. Um, as we have further defined and looked at how do you make better leaders, um, all that comes into play. How do you identify a good leader? What, what is a good leader to you? A lot depends on situation. Um, in the military, someone who is good at leadership at platoon or company level may not be, you know, the, the, the hands-on direct level may not be as good a leader when we're talking uh, brigade, division, a lot, much larger scale, like national level operations. They, don't, they can't adjust the scale and their style of leadership may not 
translate very well. So how do you identify good leaders? Uh, here in JRTC, we have a very brief time frame to build and grow that leadership, but there's definitely opportunities there. Okay, born leader approach. You know, that you believe you're born with certain traits. Um, it really comes down to how you employ some of those traits, what are the traits that you do have, and how you do you develop it over time. There's very much a, an education to leadership. Um, again, some people may be gifted with certain skill areas, um, but how to employ it doesn't just come naturally. You have to work on that. Okay. Behavior approach. You know, autocratic, democratic, laissez-faire is the, the a brief little phrase to help you remember what, what they, those are. You know, I am leader. I make all decisions. Very centralized, um, central focus. I don't know if anybody, you can think of a leader that, that acts that way. Um, there's the democratic approach. I am the leader, but I want your input. Um, that works pretty well in certain situations. Um, and even... and. Depends on what you're doing in life. There are times when the autocratic approach is the behavior that's needed at the moment. Um, I think a couple times in combat where there was no time to have a little uh, conference to get input from others. Uh, maybe one or two you know, key trusted individuals that if there's time, but usually in a, an immediate combat situation, you need you know, one person making the decisions to get the team going and then you can adjust later. And when you're looking at overall mission, then you use some of these other approaches. But the situation may dictate what behavior is utilized. Laissez-faire, you know, I'm the leader, but I'm not going to interfere with you. Um, usually where you give some direct guidance and um, you entrust the people uh, under your command to, to implement that in their own way. Uh, that would be an example of laissez-faire. Uh, usually where there's, there's not a time crunch. Um, for that method to be effective, you've got to be able to very, very effectively communicate what it is you want done. Uh, and again, have the trust factor. We talked about this, some of those characteristics, those elements of leadership. Trust the, the people uh, under your command to actually make that, make that happen. Okay. There's relationship behaviors and structural behaviors. Take a look at that, you know, as far as what are the concerns. Um, think of work situations or things that you've tried to accomplish a task or a mission. Some of these things come into play. Uh, again, we already talked about communication being um, essential. Uh, what is the vision? What's the goal? Uh, is there a timeline? What, you know, how do you make that work? How do you make it equal amongst the group? Um, and even sometimes, don't think of it as equality. You know, think of it as uh, what are the skill sets of the people within your team. Um, somebody, you know, when we talk about those, those winning colors, you know, that that red person, you may want to give them a hands-on task. They can, you know, and be specific and, and trust them to go knock it out. They're going to want to. They're going to love doing that. Um, maybe uh, someone in blue, a relator, they're going to be the ones that help gather input, maybe you have them do the after action review when we're all done, um, they can consolidate that, get the input from all the individuals involved, because that's, they like talking to people, they're going to, that's something that may suit their personality. They may not be as good at doing the hands-on portion that the red person did. So keep all those things in mind. There's the behavior approach, a couple of comments here, you can read through that. Again, it's not just the leader, it's you have to take into account the team. So again, we talked about what are the different characteristics, what might the winning colors be of those team members for some of this stuff to come into play, uh, especially with the, the traits and behaviors of the work group. Okay, contingency approach. That gets to, you know, like we are just saying, situational factors. What is a situation that determines, you know, effective styles and behaviors um, what is the team that you have? You know, your teams change. 
you know, even here in JRTC, the, the mix of people this year is very different than, than last year. You have some continuation. There's also been some growth and development over time um, the, the year before. Um, some of you saw some of the, the folks that were in the program. You weren't here yet, but you knew some of the people that were in JRTC. How do, how do the personalities of the unit change? What are the expectations? How, do things, how does that modify things over time? Some of you may have to adapt and learn new behaviors and styles, uh, again, based on the, the changes in the organization. Uh, other factors may come into play. If, if there's a severe time crunch, um, I know for us, we were, we were making hay a couple weekends ago, um, looking at the, you know, my, my two sons are both over six feet tall and, and pretty heavy. Um, so my youngest daughter and one, one of her friends, they were the ones up in the top of the hay loft and the boys were the ones throwing the hay bales up top. Uh, we wouldn't want the boys up there because they'd be crushing the hay. Um, in fact, it was I needed the, the strength piece down the bottom. Um, Anna and Lars were very good at doing the whole Tetris thing to make things fit in and uh, very quick to think on their feet and uh, best, best get the hay into the stacks. So again, contingency. All right, question here, effective leaders yeah, sorry, effective leadership results from a leader's ability to provide purpose, direction, and what? There's one key word there we talked about, and that was motivation. Uh, individual needs to bring a little bit there, but the, the leader really is key on, on helping pull together the team, motivating the team. Okay. The behavior model of leadership did not address what? We got a couple choices there. And I think if you've had time to think about it, it'd be C, how the situations affect the impact of leadership behaviors. Because again, different leaders have different behaviors themselves. What are the, how does that affect things? Or how does the situation affect it? Okay. In the Army leadership model, leadership attributes consist of what? Yeah, a couple choices there. A little bit of overlap in some areas. Makes it a little bit harder. Correct answer here is character, presence, and intellect. Uh, character comes down to those values. We've talked about the, the, the Army values. Loyalty, duty, respect, self-service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. That defines your character, the, the values that you bring to the table. Um, presence, we didn't really talk about that. Is there's a leadership presence? Is your leader positive? Are they energetic? Are they engaged? Uh, what is it that they do? Uh, do they look like a leader? You know, when we talk, um, how they interact in a group. Do they do they engage people? Do they sit off to the side? Do their own little thing? Uh, uniform. Uh, if you know, when we talk about uniform. You expect your leader to be. A role model they have their stuff all squared away before they start saying anything about your uniform theirs needs to be pretty tight pretty squared squared away and then intellect you do expect your leaders to think through problems does it mean they have to be the smartest person on the planet no but you do expect them to have thought about things um engage things and, and have some experience going into it that they can then employ those skills and experience and knowledge uh, to the problem at hand and it, the way they employ their team. Okay, we only got a couple more minutes here. Um, think about how you might lead a team through a task. Uh, again, um, if you're able to go to JCLC next summer, this is the, the summer camp at, at Camp Odyssey, one of the things that you do there is the leadership reaction course, where um, each situation you come to, uh, maybe a, like an obstacle, maybe something, but you'll have a mission, but you'll rotate out leadership at each position. So you'll get a turn where you are the leader. So you, you'll have a, a t planning phase of only about five minutes where you get to go look at what it, what it is, you look at the materials you have. So for example, uh, one of them, there's two platforms and then there's an open space with three posts in it that are only so high, the same level as the platform. Uh, and you have two boards, and you have to get two fuel cans 
and your team across the obstacle. If you fall into the wood chips, you know, it's just like 18 inches of wood chips. Um, if you fall into the obstacle, it's lava or whatever, you, you, you have to start over. Um, so one of you would be put in charge. You may want to see, you know, see what ideas you come up with, but also maybe get in those five minutes, see what ideas your, your team has. Um, find out if they ask if there's any additional materials that you can use. Uh, maybe they'll have a rope or something that you, may help you. Uh, and then you then have 10 minutes to accomplish the task. Um, either it works or it doesn't. What do you learn in the leadership process going through that? How do you employ your team? It's a lot of fun. So, but again, think through how, how you would lead a team through a task. All right, next thing we cannot do because we don't have people in the classroom. Um, so again, can't have the discussion following that either. <clears throat> Some of the reflection points still come into play from other experiences you've had. You know, we, we talked about communication. What is the role of communica communication in leadership? And how does trust affect people following a leader? Um, very difficult to get things done if you don't have trust. But trust, when we talk about team building, that takes time to build that trust. Um, and you have to get to know your people, um, for better or worse. Okay. Talk about skills and characteristics of leaders. Uh, I'll post a couple things in, uh, in Teams here for you, additional resources. So we have attributes here, talks about character, presence, intellect, gives you further discussion about what we've already talked about. Um, you know, we talked values, empathy, uh, a little bit talk ethos. Over here in presence, I uh, didn't really talk about confidence, but you want to see a confident leader. If, if a leader is questioning things or doesn't, have confidence in themselves, it makes you hesitant to follow. Um, intellect, again, so those things we talked about, how that comes together, and then competencies down below. You can read through those. Okay. Um, I think we're going to have to call it quits there based on time, and we'll pick up on the rest of this for tomorrow's lesson. Um, have, hope you have a great day. Uh, post any questions, comments here on Teams and look forward to continuing class tomorrow. Have a great day, Vikings.